Today I'm finally going to get to something I've been meaning to do for a few months now, backing up the hard drive in the Dauphin DTR-1 I was sent. And I'm going to be doing this over both serial and ethernet. I recently had a viewer ask me about networking in DOS, and the Dauphin DTR-1 is a 386 running Windows 3.1.1 on top of DOS, so this is a prime candidate for going over this. The DTR-1 also has an Ethernet port as well as Serial in Parallel, which are all going to be great ways of getting data into and out of it. Now, just to reiterate here, the Dauphin is a full-fledged PC that is running standard Windows 3.1.1 and DOS on here, and if you want to know more about that, LGR has a video on this that I highly recommend. But because this is a standard PC from about 1993, it has a spinning hard drive in it to load its operating system from. Now, a typical hard drive from that era was a 3.5 inch drive, and those are massive compared to the size of this. So instead, the Dauphin has in it a Kitty Hawk micro drive. Now, unfortunately, these Kitty Hawk micro drives are proving to be very unreliable now, and they are starting to fail. Even the one in LGR's example is no longer working. The last I know, though, mine still works, and I want to try and back up the contents of the drive before it fails. Alright, now before we get to the DTR-1, let me show you how I'm going to connect to it over Serial. So included in later versions of DOS is a tool called Interlink, and with that you can use a Serial cable or a special type of parallel cable to connect to another computer hosting InterServe and then access the files on it. So this is my Gateway Liberty 2000, it's actually from one of the first videos that I did on this channel, and I have it connected over serial here, so we can see that it is hosting its C and, well, A drive that's non-existent right now, and on this computer it's now H. So if I go to my H drive on this computer and do a directory listing, it's going to take a very long time because serial is slow, but we can see the volume name is Windows 95, and after it eventually gets the data we'll see the contents of this computer's drive. There we go, and that is incredibly handy, because now I can copy files, or try and launch something, I did actually try and launch the install of Retro City Rampage on here, on this computer, and it took about 20 minutes to load, so it's very very slow, but just a straight up file copy shouldn't take too horribly long, well, just for a test, let's try this, X copy, command com, to F, which is my temp directory, and let's see how long that takes. It looks like that is 93k, so yeah, let's see. Now, I mean, that wasn't great, but that's not too bad. So, it gives you an idea, we can copy files over this connection. Now, in order to get Interlink working on both systems, you're going to need to go into your config sys file and add this line, and that will add Interlink to the TSRs that run in the background so that the computers can connect and share information. I would recommend adding the no printer option just because you're not likely to share a printer, so you don't need that running in the background as well, wasting resources. Now I mentioned that I'm using Serial for this, and you could get it to work over Parallel, you just need a cable that's designed for this, and I don't have one of those and don't really want to try and get one at the moment. You can also find a solution by a company, and that is called LapLink, and with that you can do something similar, but you still need a custom Parallel cable. This works and is included in most DOS installs that are older, or newer I should say, and that would allow you to just do this without needing to find anything unusual except for the fact that you need a null modem cable. Now, this is a null modem cable adapter, and the only reason I actually know that is because I got it out of the original packaging. Null modem cables aren't always identified, like this one, and you have no idea that it isn't just a same-gendered straight-through cable, so that can be really annoying. Now, there are some null modem adapters that are labeled, but you might find that they're more often going to be the large 25 pin variants because it's a lot easier to fit a label on something like this. So that's just something to keep in mind. Now while it won't be any problem at all to use the DTR1 over serial with Interlink, I would like to use the Ethernet port if that has a faster network connection because the faster I can transfer the data off of this, the less strain there will be on the hard drive inside of it. 
So I would like to get that going, and to do that I'm going to use MTCP. There are just a few considerations that I have to make before I can try doing that. I don't think I've mentioned this yet, but the computer I'm using here is my 46 system I built in a video a while ago. And in that I put a network card and I was able to load the packet driver to get this to work. Now MTCP is my preferred network suite for DOS and that uses the network packet driver to communicate with the network card. If you want to know more about how to set this up, I went through the entire process at the end of that video and I'll link to that in a timestamp in the description here. I have made one change to this setup since then though. Instead of connecting to my FTP server with my 486, I instead host the FTP server on the 486 and connect to it with a modern system. This is a lot easier to work with because I can use whatever FTP interface I want, like FileZilla here, and it is just far easier to work with than any other solution. And now that it is hosted, I can go ahead and connect. And there we go, I am connected and can access all my files. So for instance, I have backed up all of the floppy disks and other software that was included with the DTR1 and I can now get those off of the 486 system here and transfer them to my Mac so I can upload them somewhere for a long term archiving solution. All right, so there's how I'm going to attempt to back this up. Now I'm almost ready to start. There's just one potential hurdle I need to account for, and that's for MTCP over Ethernet. I don't know if this has the packet driver for DOS on it already, because this is meant to run Windows 3.1 mostly, because it's touchscreen, and it would use something different like an ODI driver for that. Now, I did find a packet driver that should work with this, but the problem is getting it onto it. I'm going to have to use serial. Now, I should be able to copy it onto a floppy disk, but I took this to LTX with the floppy drive on display, and after repacking it, I seem to have misplaced it. Unfortunately, I have quite a lot of laptop floppy drives that use proprietary interfaces, and it probably got mixed in with one that it doesn't belong with, so I need to go through and check all of my storage bins for that to try and find out where it went. But for now, I'm going to be able to use Interlink, hopefully. If I can't use Interlink, well, then I have problems. So we're going to see if I can get Interlink set up, and then if I can get networking set up and transfer MTCP using Interlink to this, and then host the FTP server on here, and then copy everything using, well, actually, my new computer, not this. So, ah, all right, let's finally fire this up and see what we have going on here. And I believe the power switch, yep, there we go, on. So it should be starting now. It's an HP C3014A. I'm not sure what capacity that is. F1 to continue. F1 to continue, no boot device available. Uh-oh. Oh, please don't tell me the hard drive died already. Starting MS-DOS, okay. Whew! DOS 6. I will do it without zip drive. Zip drive wouldn't be a bad way to go, actually. I have a zip drive right next to me. <laughs> Just in case, because I thought it had that. Okay. Yeah, the Stoffender here, that's probably the one with all the stuff we really need to back up. So I want to make sure... Uh, oh, escape to abort. Here we go. All right, F10, quit. Perfect. All right. Dir, DOS, INT, which show us the interlink. Files are not in there. What? Uh-oh. CD, DOS, enter, LNK. Oh, it doesn't have interlink. Oh, that's a problem. How does it not? Oh, it must have only been included with 622, not 6. Oh, that sucks. CD, Windows. Let's try and launch Windows 3, see if that does anything. Win. It's Windows for work groups, but I don't know that 
it's going to mean for me. The four work groups, meaning that it has networking, that is. I don't think... Yeah, it's an active pen, I believe. I do have the pen. A The battery compartment is damaged and needs repaired. That will be a totally different project. I'm suspecting now, though, that I'm going to have to find the, uh, the, uh, I'm, I'm just frustrated now, the floppy drive and get that working. I don't actually know how you change the control tab. There we go. I don't, I really doubt Norton Commander is going to have anything networking going on. Oh, that's what I was using before. Yeah, of course it's not. Alrighty, what will land on do here? Not a whole lot. Oh, interlink. What? Okay, interlink. Why does it think there's an interlink folder? Okay, now I'm super confused. Is there an interlink program in the Dauphin folder? That hard drive is very loud, by the way. No, there was no interlink in here. That's weird. No. You know what? I'm going to try connecting the zip disk drive and see if that works. So, I guess that means parallel, um, because that might be enough to back up the whole thing. If it's already got zip disk, everything installed. So, uh, I'm going to shut it down and try that. And since it's DOS, I guess just this. All right, let's give this a shot. I'm going to find it absolutely hilarious if I end up backing this up with a zip disk, I just have to say. Booting DOS. We'll do it with zip support, I guess. Uh, with zip drive. I actually don't know if this drive works or if that disk is good or what's on it, but... Hey, if I can get this going, that's fine. Well, okay, found Zip 100. So, I, I, I really, I don't think I've ever actually used one of these. Are these SCSI over LPT? That's kind of hilarious. Let's try Norton Commander, because I know that'll do stuff. Oh, there's DOS prompt. I should have done that. Hopefully this shows up as Drive D. D. Oh, where is it? Oh, there it is. That's... Uh, Bingo. All right. Durr. We got stuff. Okay. So, Dell. Uh, star. Where's period? Dot. Star. I don't have a good angle on the keyboard right now. Uh, yes. Err. Uh, boom. Excellent. Okay. I might be about to run the command that's going to back it up. X copy. Uh subdirectories c star dot star and let's roll now this should have a 20 or 40 megabyte hard drive in it so the 100 megabyte zip disk should be able to hold absolutely everything okay i gotta admit it's pretty cool watching it buffer stuff to memory here and then write it out to the disk over there you know, I don't remember there being all these files in root directory of C. Uh, I wonder if it's just not showing full paths, or hopefully it's not overwriting everything directly into the root of the zip disk. This seems a little odd. So, I've been warned that the exact command I ran there may not copy uh, hidden files and stuff, and just to be safe, I want to do a second backup as well, so I'm going to grab another zip disk here. And uh, after this finishes, I'm going to rerun the command with this one, and PC100, what? Oh, no, they're all like that, okay. Anyway, I'm going to rerun the command on this one and uh, add a few more arguments there. So if it uh, is ignoring uh, hidden files and such and I'm not noticing, that should hopefully collect them all. But I'm going to wait for this one to finish, of course. 
Ah, I just backed up the Windows folder, not the whole drive. Oops, well, okay. I'm gonna redo this on the second disc uh, and run the uh, command I was recommended. It's just, it's basically the same command, but with a whole whack ton more parameters. Let's see, I think it's my fault that I didn't put that there slash, although, eh, I don't know. Let's just try it, let's go with this, all right. Invalid switch, H. Alrighty. Not too surprised something did work. Alright. Next copy. S. I'm just gonna go with what I know. See if these files make more sense as I start popping in. Yeah, yeah, those are a lot more sensible files. Auto exec command, yeah. Dolphin, that's the folder. Well, I mean, that's some of the folder we need. Okay, that is gonna be a good backup there. Okay. <laughs> all right looks like it has finally finished um and that that's a successful copy of the entire drive now i still think it's very critical that i uh get a duplicate full drive archive so i'm just gonna rerun the same command again on another disc now um and have it start working on that and then I'm going to figure out how I'm going to read this disk on another system. So uh, I'm going to get started on that. Probably actually going to move this whole thing somewhere else though, because it's really noisy and I don't want to bump it while I'm trying to work on other stuff. Okay, welcome to day two of the I Wish Things Would Go The Way I Plan show. Now, I've actually already backed up the zip disk with the uh, data on it from the DTR1. I did it from the second backup I made, actually, because that disk was still in the drive. Now, my 486 PC, which is under the desk, has a ZIP250 drive in it, and while I would have liked to have got that working, it's IDE, and I would have had to move cables around, and I'm not 100% sure that it'll actually work with DOS. Uh, I have a SuperDisk 120 drive in there as well, and I think those don't work with DOS due to some weird ASPI or ASCPI error problem. I don't know. It's something strange. Anyway, I didn't want to fiddle around with that. So I installed the Omega um, driver things. Uh, and it turns out getting a parallel port uh, zip drive to work is super easy. You just run guest and it works with it. Now, this takes forever for it to find a drive letter on my system, and I do have a whole lot of drives because I have my IDE CD changer in there. So that might be my fault, but uh, we'll go ahead and skip past this because it takes a long, long time. All right, and there we have it. Now, I don't know why it shows up as a 250 and a 100. I'm pretty sure this is just a 100 drive. Um, yeah, it's a 100 drive, so I have no idea why. But whatever, we can go to O. And if we get a directory listing, it takes a little while to read the talk. But it eventually works. And we can see that is indeed the root of the DTR1. So from here, I went to the F directory on my drive, which if you paid attention to my little starter menu is my temp space. Um, I made a folder called DTR1 and I ran xcopy, uh, the same subdirectory thing from O to here and was able to copy everything into this directory. So that's all there except that one didn't work quite well so actually made dtr2 which does have everything in there i don't know why the first copy didn't actually work but never delete anything when you're trying to do data backup so i have both in there okay and from here um using mtcp run ftp serve and then over and move my coffee here on my macbook i went ahead and connect to the 46 it's got to figure out that the floppy drives don't have any disks in them first and then it'll let me connect bingo from here i can go to drive f and now i have the dtr1 files and i copied them over to this and then copied this over to my server and now the files from the dtr1's 
installation from the factory are backed up on a ZFS pool, so it's safe. <laughs> so the next step is going to be um, cleaning out any potential private information from it. Uh, before I was sent the DTR1, the former owner did actually try to clear out everything. So it may have been done already, but I'm just going to double check that there's nothing lingering. Um, and then I can upload all of that to archive.org. So finally, the DTR1's install files will be uh, preserved. And now I do know these are slightly unique. It has a VGA driver for Windows 3.1.1 in there that is um, somewhat proprietary. Um, I tried to load the whole install for this in DOSBox and it wouldn't load because the uh, VGA driver detects that it's a different video card. Um, and that's because DOSBox tries to emulate an S3 graphics card. I'm tempted to make two versions of the DTR1 backup, one that will um, be used to reflash a DTR1, I should, let's say, um, and then another one that you could run in DOSBox that would allow you to have the DTR1 experience, um, but I don't know how really interesting that would be, um, so I don't know. Uh, that's something to play around with for now, um, but that's pretty much it. Uh, I'm really not happy with how this video turned out because <laughs> I spent all that time up front talking about how we were going to do networking stuff like this. And then in the end, it was stupid zip disks that saved the day. So, you know, it's still so weird. I've had zip disks like my entire life, but I've never actually used any of them. Um, I have 30 of those, um, multiple, many drives, um, but I never really use zip disk. It's I don't know, I guess there's nothing wrong with it, it's just it never appealed to me. Superdisk is cool, but those drives are also compatible with 3.5 inch uh, 1.44 megabyte floppy disk, so they make a bit more sense. Zipdisk has always just seemed like a dead-end format that has no future usability. Um, so I don't know, I never really trusted Zip. I mean, I, it, yeah, it just seems like something that once your zip drive dies, then all your data is locked away on these and you can never get it off. So I've never been a huge fan of formats like that. Uh, I like LTO drives because they have a history of making them backwards compatible for a few generations for at least reading. So that kind of makes sense for backups and data like that. But yeah, anyway, that's enough odd rambling. Uh, I think I'm going to go ahead and call this video here and... Uh, probably just make this patrons only i don't know i'm not happy with it but for now that's pretty much it um if this is going to be patrons only then thank you <laughs> um, i don't need to remind you that you can find me on patreon but yeah that's it all right hopefully i can find something more interesting and reliable and workable to do for the next one all right i'll see you later